Welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break, your home for current community talk, with Patricia Duart, Darlene Hayes, and Connie Wright. All right, it's holiday time. Welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break, and the last we're ready. show for 2015. The yeah. last show. Goodness, it's been a heck of a year. I know, it's just a lot of fun to kind of whoop it up a little bit, you know, season of food and fun, family and lights and... And, <gasps> and a lot going on. I mean, yeah. I went through the whole 300th anniversary year. Yeah. We went to the closing last week. That was really nice. It was just a, a nice tribute and, and I love the video. If anybody hasn't seen that yet, the video. Oh, and it's on H-Camp's video. On H-Camp, yeah. yeah it's, and um, they had a chocolate bar and... Kids were getting sugared up, so <laughs> they were making decorating <laughs> cookies. But when you think about this past year and what the 300th did and all the events, um, and we went to a lot of them, and, and the yeah, a lot, the <laughs> fountain being restored, Absolutely. and the, the town celebration, the fireworks. Wow, how amazing right. was that? That was the best ever. That As was, everyone has said, just think. I, I don't, really but. I don't think I've ever seen fireworks anywhere that, right. that great. Mm -hmm. They were fantastic. You know, right there. The parade. The, the, the Lumberjack the show was yeah. great. It, you know, the Lumberjack so show was awesome. I yeah. really yeah. love that. Yeah. It was cold out that day, but it was awesome. It was yeah. fun. It was you fun. Know? But I mean, a lot of things even like, you know, in our own lives. I mean, a lot of transition with what, things I'm doing for work. Andrew graduated high school yep. and yep. stuff like that. Absolutely. Yep, this stuff. has been a year of change, a lot of change. Mm. So it's a real befitting. And just one, one other just major shout out on the 300th was all that historical um, information that we learned mm. from Chuck Joseph and others. Um, it's just, it, it, just in keeping with this whole transition thing. I mean, and yeah. I think two yeah. of the biggest you know, thank yous go out to like Gene Burcham and to Ann Click. Yeah. One, you know, and managing the the friends of the Ho friends of Hopkinton, and then Gene overseeing the the uh, town appointed Hopkinton yeah. 300th committee, and those two women really pulled off the whole thing. Yeah, they did. They well, did. it was so poignant at the I'm event an elf. how this the elderly gentleman from the three friends of the 300th gave an award to uh, a token of appreciation to Gene, and it was just heartfelt, and there was something sweet about that that particular acknowledgement that uh, really yeah. summed it up for me. Yeah. Well, they started off the year with Sterling, um, and I can't remember his last name, but he's the oldest resident in Hoppington, mm -hmm. getting this special cane. And I mean, one of the things we're really, th I think he's 104, I think. Oh, wow. So I think one of the things we're very thankful right. is that Sterling's here at the end of the year, too, because yeah. his birthday's in January. So yeah. he, you know, he was here yeah. for the whole, is here for the whole year. And, um, you know, there's a lot of people, changes going on in town, too. Jerry Holland's retiring, Maureen Dwinnell's retiring. Ken Clark. Ken, Ken Clark's Clark. retiring. Significant roles. Uh, you know, chief of uh, fire, of course, uh, with Ken, Ken Clark and Jerry Holland as town clerk and Maureen as a financial and director, right? I mean, yeah, role, I guess I've always known Maureen is, I mean, <laughs> but is the woman you pay your taxes to. Exactly. I would just show up and like, what's your address? Here it is. Just take it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, doing organizational work, I mean, you just automatically think about the, what any organization has to do and prepare for when these major um, you and, know, and these are actually roles are changed. Three, three major, major three people positions. Yeah. with very, very deep roots in town. And a lot of exactly. the other people who work in town hall or even work in the fire department police actually don't even live in town or from town so you know these are three people who are very deeply multi decades right. of town service and living in town yeah and while it may or may not be a requirement um someone pointed out that we're getting down to almost no leaders that right. are from Hopkinton. I guess that's your point and i think right? that's it it's a big deal because you know the town then you you know and especially someone like a, you know fire chiefs and police officers and things like that knowing a side cut to get to a, get to an emergency is important. Well, you know, it's, it's not just knowing the physical space of the town, but I think it's very important whether you grew up in town or not. When you're in those town roles, you need to know the people of the right. town. I yeah. think it's really key that as people assume those leadership roles, that they really know their constituents, and that's where when you don't know your constituents, you have issues mm -hmm. with. Um, services and, and attitudes <laughs> exactly um so you know to me it's a little well, sad plus, plus the advantage of being in a small town is that you do get to know these you know key town employers uh, you know not employers but leaders and department heads and folks that you can yeah. get information from readily and i mean it, one know. of the ones i think about and it's not that he's lived in town for generations he hasn't it's someone like officer phil 
where oh. he does live in town. His kids have grown here. He's, his youngest just graduated. Um, he this knows past year. the people. But he knows yeah. the people. And then, you know, being part of the school system now, too. You really know he the He really family. knows the families and things like that. And it becomes someone that, you know, we've had him on the show that people really trust. Right. And, and, you know, the same time, you know, sometimes it's weird, you know, uh, having grown up here in the area, too, is that if you ran into, you know, your priest or your your kid, teacher. your teacher, or something in the grocery store, or something like that. It's like, oh, you eat too. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that's it's good for kids to see. Exactly. I was going to say, but that's what I think is important, and that what sometimes keeps people from doing things because they realize it is the village. It takes a village. Right. But, but I also think it's important that our leaders, as we move through this transition, whomever replaces them. If they aren't in the town, they have to make a really concerted effort to get yeah. to know the town. If they're not, it's going to change the flavor yeah. of the town. But and to whatever extent we can help, along with yeah. all the other groups and people, yep. um, we certainly want to avail ourselves right. as we've gotten to know uh, so other, some services. Other things that have gone on over the year as we reflect back, I mean, we've had a lot of wonderful guests here on the show. Um, yeah, and I think we've built some good relationships that have even gone there. You know, yesterday, you know, Patricia and I went out to lunch, and it was with uh, one of the people that had been a guest, Linda Waters. And that, you know, from her being a guest to almost that we've developed like an affiliate program with her to now a friendship. Well, and, and you we know, I went and, her and I went and helped her at um, Women's Mass Conference, Conference. Mass yeah. Conference Women. Well, I've actually known her for going but, on a decade. But, but we really, though, connected with her during Marathon, marathon. Weekend. Exactly. Um, that was our first introduction. Yeah, for sure. and and you know, it, it, when you think of the year in, in um, you know, retrospective, um, the marathon was really successful this Absolutely. year. It was a lot of fun. Um, I know charity numbers just went out, and people are hustling around. You know, the senior center got some. I know Keep Smile for Abby only got one. And uh, they're really looking for some more numbers and stuff like that. But it's you know right now all the numbers are going out. The town has some and um, giving. What do you mean numbers? Tell me. The running runners numbers. Oh, oh runners. official the numbers. Okay. The town gets so many allotted mm -hmm. to them, and then right. they can give them out to town charities and the library foundation, and you know, and then basically you're bartering between different organizations. Sometimes you sell them and things like that. So that's. Yeah. Happening. I got a couple texts last night of like people trying to find a couple Dollars. more numbers. Yeah. Oh, cool. Are you thinking about running? Cool. Well, <laughs> oh, no. But I am thinking about joining the um, the the uh, the loser for the library thing. Oh. And I, I know I'd have to weigh in before I think January seventh. So. And that's thirty dollars and. CrossFit's hosting it. You don't have to be a member of CrossFit. You don't have to go to CrossFit. And I'm going to guarantee you, I'm not going to be. <laughs> um, but it's just a motivation to lose weight. And the, you know, the person who loses the most, they're doing like a 50-50 raffle. Half the proceeds go to the Library Foundation, and half go to the person who's the biggest loser. Right, so right. you need to check in at CrossFit. Yes. And you you, you can weigh in. You, re you register. You register online. You pay thirty dollars online. Right. Yep. And it. Half of the proceeds go to the library, and the other half goes to the person who the loses biggest loser. loser. The yeah, biggest loser. The biggest loser. That'll be fun. So very I mean, cool. Well, yeah. I think, um, and I don't even. Today is a week before Christmas. Oh my gosh! So are you ready? Um, no. Gift. <laughs> I think. No. I think gift shop. No, just, just. It's easy. Right. right no. Now. <laughs> I, I, I think outside of like gift shopping. I mean, I have like no. my mother and maybe my sister left, but. You yeah. know, everybody else is done. I've started rapping, and Andrew comes back from college tomorrow, so we'll hustle on trees and decorating and cookies and all that. The tree is the last thing for me. I could almost skip it. I, that's terrible, but I love it. I, I, that's like the thing, but um, we don't have our tree up, so a lot so of the decorations. We've always postponed putting the tree up in the past when the kids were little because Emerson's birthday was at the beginning of the month, so we always would do it the weekend after, which meant it was around the 10th or the 15th. And then we started postponing it while the kids were going to college for when the first one came home. Well, last year, everybody came home right before Christmas. We literally got <laughs> one of the last trees in town. It was so, well, it was a really tall tree that they had to cut down for us. And so when you lop it down, it wasn't conical shaped, it was orb shaped. Oh, yeah. It was just this big <laughs> right. fat tree. Round bush. <laughs> and this year, um, you know, we're doing different things. And You're traveling, aren't you? I'm traveling. That's so, uh, you know, I'm going to see my mom, and the kids are coming with me. 
And so no tree. We've got decorations. Just no tree. Well, for, so. for us, Christmas is a repeat of Thanksgiving with, with you know. With decorations. With decorations, and lights, and, you know, the same thing. So it's fun. Although this year, my brother's coming in on Christmas Day, okay. arriving, which is good for, you know, travel costs and whatever in the, in, you yeah. know, in the afternoon, which is, I, I think we're going to move things up and do more of the Christmas thing on Christmas Eve. So. And have that be our main, main stake. So do you have a traditional meal that you make Christmas Eve or Christmas Day? Yeah, pretty much. You know, the, the meat of choice uh, for us is the beef tenderloin. We you know, do that fact, too. In fact, my mom yeah. was like, what do you need? Yeah, you got to do this. My son always calls it the Christmas meat as a yeah. little kid. We're having oh, Christmas meat. And we do, <laughs> you know, the roast beast. Oh, roast beast. Roast beast. Roast beast. Roast beast. the roast beast. the roast beast and Christmas the roast beast. What do you guys do? Uh, on Christmas Day, we do the roast. We do, we do, we actually, it's, it's Arena just called a little while ago. Uh, it's ready. Um, we do a standing prime rib roast, and um, we may do a lasagna or s like stuffed shells or something like that with it. And, but you, you know, do some seafood Christmas Eve. Seafood Christmas Eve. We do the feast of the salmon fishes. Um, you know, and it's toned down a bit over the years as you know parents have gotten more elderly. It's like my parents don't come anymore on Christmas Eve. They oh, just come Christmas Day. Okay. So it's very much a focus on Michael's family and a couple friends that come over. But the um, it's got, it's, you know, and, but now we have adult nephews that are married, so, and they have responsibilities to other families, so, it, you know, it's toned down from being 40 people and a ton of them under 18 and, or under 10 at one point to about 28 of us, I think it'll, they'll be, and maybe half are kids, half aren't. See, as all adults, it really kind of makes it, you know, well, a different changes kind of the thing. flavor. We still have a lot of fun. So, yeah, yeah. Well, all kids get gifts. We, right. So they and, the, and they're piled up, and they actually they they open in a certain order and everything else. So you and every year it goes whether they they spin something, and if it's um one thing oldest to youngest and if it's right. the other it's youngest oldest and the last couple of years it's been oldest to youngest so watching like you know six-year-olds pacing around like ready, ready to lose it yeah. but um and then the adults only we all buy for mike's mother my parents things like that but um we do a yankee swap oh that's fun so I we like have a little different christmas eve is a big meal christmas day while well, the presents get opened, um, the, the meal is a uh, more varies. relaxed day. But we do individual beef wellingtons, but we, and we don't open gifts, but we always do the Christmas um, poppers. The poppers, and, yeah. And um, some years I've Because you're like a proper British family. A proper British oh, right. family. <laughs> well, I do sometimes do like a Yorkshire pudding. I mean, we had or, poppers or, one yeah. year too, and I was like, I don't know. What's supposed to be in but, there? Well, so <laughs> I will, a little paper crown and a I will toy. add yeah. gifts to okay. it in some years and, and have done nice things. But there's always a crown, uh, a joke, or a riddle, yeah, yeah. And, okay. and then a gift. Okay. Like so, a little yeah. plastic toy. Right. Little, yeah. 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 It's like a Cracker Jack toy. Yeah, we did it that. It was fun. Yeah. But, uh, but this year we're doing it in Florida. And then, of course, the thing that we always do around the Christmas season is make gingerbread houses. So my oh. mom is all excited because we're going to do gonna do it there. houses down there. Oh, and I so do fun. the, you know, it's not a kit. I take cardboard, I roll out the gingerbread, I cut out the shapes, I make the decorator icing, so and you go together with that. So you, that huh? This year is the first time that we've actually added a kid's craft into our thing, and we're going to do the cheap version of doing gingerbread houses. We'll have graham crackers, graham crackers the graham crackers, cartons, the milk cartons, and all that, because <laughs> yeah. of people's work schedules coming in and out. That the families with young kids are actually there earlier. Yeah, you got. And they're busy. waiting for like Andrew to get home from work to like have dinner. They're waiting for Michael to get home from work to eat and open gifts. That gives them so we are too. actually. Uh, I have. Yeah. Where yeah. do I find little milk cartons of milk yeah. though? <laughs> so I uh, my kids. You know, what do we call it? The the, high, the school. What do I got? Like Melissa, it's like go, yeah, go, go buy hoard. <laughs> get and her to and hoard. Start just pouring them down the street. Yeah, just get her to hoard. <laughs> so if you have um, a house full of adults and it's still like tech. Time, you know, with everyone kind of being online in a fun way. I mean, we won't all be sitting around just like with your yeah. family, you know, um, kind of looking at that that sort of thing uh, during the day because every, no one gets up early. Everyone sleeps no, up Christmas not Day anymore. Till, you know, ten, eleven o'clock or later. Yeah. And, now uh, that now that uh, now that uh, they're not worried um, what Santa's going to bring them or not bring them, um, they don't get up at five in the morning like they years. used to. But we're still very organized about we never opening did. the Even gifts. as kids, yeah. my kids never have. And um, yeah. 
even no, as kids, we never did. But you were saying you're organized. We're organized about opening the gifts. Like yeah, we are. always Evan always plays like he pulls them out, and yep. we we like everyone to wait and see what everybody got. And so, so they get their stash in front of them. Yep, and you just everyone takes a turn. And everyone. Ha yeah, that, we do that, and yeah. I and I grew up that way. And my mother-in-law, the first couple of years, even when the kids were little, and she she started sleeping over a lot. She's like, I just don't understand. Why don't they don't just just tear into it? I don't no. like. I don't know. We never did that growing up. We'd open right. something. I'd show it to Janet. Janet yeah. show me hers. I know things that's like a that. lot of fun and, for and, some. And stuff, but we makes it last. Yeah. And, and, you know, yeah. Oh, but you know. then you know, I know people who, like when they, their paper is everywhere and then they're throwing out gift cards or missing things. See, no, stuff I don't like, like that. that. And we've never had that. I like yeah. Yeah. And underneath the things, I have garbage bags right. on Christmas Eve, and you Me pull too. them out. We are the same. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that so funny? you know, I do want to give a shout out because while we celebrate Christmas, um, this is also you know the season Hanukkah just uh, just ended a few ended days ago. And, and, and wrapped up, and there's a couple other uh, festivities. Well, recently but, uh, the Festivus, Diwali festival. Festivus, 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 Festivus is for tonight. The, for, yeah. And in fact, they, I read the word that there are about a holiday. <laughs> there are a large number of religions across the world that are celebrating around this time. Well, this is the yeah. winter solstice. The yes. pagan. We're festivals. going to a winter solstice party tomorrow. So, there's yeah. a huge fire with it. I have to tell you, and I'll, I'm going to have to send you guys a picture. So um, the movie just came out, Krampus. And Krampus is the kind of anti-Santa Claus, ah. but I knew the story of Krampus because, you know, we're Pennsylvania Dutch, which is German, and, and Krampus is German, Swiss, kind of that. Um, and I have had an, a, a bunch of Santa ornaments that I've hung on my mantle with the stockings. I've had it from since kids have been this little, mm -hmm. and one of them is Santa grabbing a kid and stuffing him in the sack, and so <laughs> it's like I, Santa. Santa. <laughs> oh yeah, well I'm not, but really? he's Krampus, you know, Krampus. And, and well Krampus. Krampus is the name of the movie. C R A M P U S, mm -hmm. and Krampus is either like a stylized kind of cloven hoof, scary creature, or is simply Saint Nick, when. There's a good Santa and a bad Santa, and the good Santa is in red, and the bad Santa isn't always in red. But he comes, and you know that's who gives you coal. That's who well, see, we never takes got away the, we bad never kids. Got that and flavor of Santa. We never <laughs> had that either. Oh, you know, us, 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 you know, us the US brothers people. grim. But yeah, well, you know, the brothers grim. <laughs> yeah. We got it to the U.S. We yeah. sanitized it and made it all happy. Yeah, you know, we, the we commercialized story. it and made it like oh, real, oh, oh, bye, bye, bye. The real story, you know, <laughs> Cinderella. The sisters chopped off their feet to try to fit it in the slipper. They were gruesome. <laughs> Those, you know, those things are nightmares. I'm glad we've smoothed out exactly. some, some of those stories. Wow. But, uh, but so heading into New Year's. Yes, Well, the, and this weekend is um, Waterfresh Farms open house. Yes. And there's a lot Santa will on. be there. They're trying to fill the truck with Bessie, with the truck's name's Bessie, oh, with um, toys for the children that are at Serenity, Serenity House. house. Oh, and, nice. um, oh, I just was at Waterfresh Farm on. You did paint night. I did paint night. That looked that like a fun, fun time. That was yeah. fun. And so what was uh, it? It was wine tasting and dinner and a little bit of wine tasting mm -hmm. at the beginning, but it was mostly seltzer water and painting mm -hmm. and dinner and that's painting cool. and yeah. Well, uh, the finished products look great. You said you <laughs> couldn't paint yours. Look, it was yeah, great. It looks great. Yeah, yeah. But a, yeah, uh, I know gathering. a lot of churches are doing midnight services, and we've been running around looking at Christmas lights. Found some oh. awesome ones. I will tell you that Singletary Lane Highland Park. Yeah. Just That's do a drive-by. It is amazing. And maybe just we can, amazing. We can, and then there's a whole bunch yeah. of others, I know. We should post on this show the um, link to all the different ones that we've been seeing these posts about. The, all the light shows in Massachusetts and, and The locally. one in Somerville. Then there's the yeah. I went to Tower Hill Botanical, and that was there great. There was one that t had them peppered all over the state. So I, I, I clicked that up. The, yeah. I, yeah, so I can give that link to yeah, have them posted have. up. But um, yeah. they're all over the state in places. I went to one last at like 4 30 in the afternoon but it was already dark um i like right Mary, right on the highland ave and stuff but um, i take the, the scenic route wherever i'm going yeah. just running errands and just going through um neighborhoods and just you know just seeing Turning the different off. well yeah. um and and different there way. are quite a few i mean Not it's just fun to no. tootle around and as you get closer my favorite time of day lately has been dusk it's not pitch black, which sometimes driving around here is tough on the windy roads, but it's just that twinkling time when the lights are out and the sky is that purple color. I love it. It's been really I nice. Know, I, I feel spirit filled at that time of yeah. day. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. So New Year's, yeah. what are you guys on tap for New Year's? Mm, nothing. I don't mm. like to go out on New Year's. You don't like to go out? I don't out. like to do much of anything. Like, You're so like, funny. But like that kind of stuff. I'm always scared of hearing like reports of 
bad drivers oh, yeah. or people yeah. like ring in the new year and don't make it home so a lot of times I go nowhere you go nowhere I've had people over to play board games and things like that but, uh, yeah I kind of like it low-key too but um, I like the idea of the new year I mean I watch the thing on Think TV oh yeah oh yeah exactly I know I have to admit <laughs> I haven't made it to midnight the last couple of years I, I've missed the ball dropping it's like I well I've caught like the ball dropping in Sydney Australia or, you know all the early ones haven't made New York. Yeah. But, you know, got up some, you know, interesting things on the horizon for the new year. Yes. And um, we've got I'm some fun guests lined up to come we've on the show. Fun guests lined up to be on this show. We've got so fun ventures going on with yeah. us. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And, um, um, and in our day job, some good things going on. And go on. I'll yes. give a shout out to you, too. So what are you excited about, Connie? Well, I just had my first faculty meeting last night. I'm going to be teaching uh, a, a class at Tufts University in entrepreneurial finance. Oh, so I'm really good. excited. Um, very good. I'm going to get to do that. And uh, That'd it's, be fun. it's definitely something that I've had on my to-do list. Yeah. And I'm thrilled that I get to do it. So. Well, I'm excited about a little something, too. I uh, will have an opportunity to do a workshop in New York at the cool. Waldorf Astoria for my, one of my clients. They're, they're oh, a national cool. meeting. So what kind of workshop? Um, it's going to be talking to their HR teams across the country and um, talking about some specific uh, sort of uh, transition management issues that they're having in the, in the organization and finally getting them all together. But I'm mostly excited. I mean, I can do that anyway. Mm -hmm. But the fact that it's in New York City yeah. <laughs> is yep. always fun. And the fact that they're, they're having such good digs uh, is, is, is fun. So I'm That's excited about great. that. It's a fun Absolutely. hotel to be in, too. It is, yeah. It you know, I've stayed the there park. a couple times in the... Um, I always love the uh, the tea they have in the afternoon there too, and there's also yeah. like the, the little museum you can walk through the history of Waldo. That's fun. But, so. And you got cool, cool stuff on your agenda in 2016. Well, I, mean, I, I uh, immediately in January I'm working on a fairly large gala with about 700 people for wow. January 23rd. So yeah. yes. that's for the Sportsman's Tennis and Enrichment Center in Dorchester, right. and it's their largest fundraiser of the year. So that'll be pretty much my focus for the next probably four weeks. I really weeks. enjoyed that visit. Um, mm -hmm. to uh, getting to know that organization, getting to meet them for the first time. Very cool. There's so Very much cool. going on. Well, and then on this show, we have mm -hmm. a couple of guests lined up. Uh, um, we have Chris Hart that'll be coming on. He's the and chef Hart, that yeah. won. Uh, no, we didn't win. We, he, he made the top. <laughs> he was a finalist? He was a finalist with uh, yes, thank the you. Food Network's Top Barbecue. Chef Grill Masters. Grill Masters. Yeah. Uh, then we're going to have Sarah Gillespie on. Well, it's kind of like a food thing going on in different times. Um, and she food. is the sugar artist and basically pretty well-known world uh, baker uh, from Cincinnati that's moved to Hopkinton. So, so My sugar hometown. artist is is that generic decorating. or is that a particular well, it's, title? Well, it's the, it's, it's, it's working with the hot decorating sugar. It of usually cakes, but it doesn't necessarily have to be just at the cakes. And yeah, it's working with hot sugar, like melted sugar. And she did the cake for the 300th. Which if you haven't seen pictures or if you weren't Amazing. there, that yeah. thing was unbelievable. But, yeah, I mean, did it, did it, they ever eat that cake or was that decoration only? It was decoration only. Oh, they, the, the cake you ate was she cakes done in the okay. background yeah. to make it affordable for sure. something like that. Yeah. But um, a lot of sh sugar artists are the side decorations that lead up to a cake or okay. different yeah. things. Um, and it's, you know, she's done, worked with like Oprah's favorite things and things like that. So it's going to be kind of neat uh, to hear. Oprah's favorite, favorite things? She made that she list? She goes so fast. <laughs> okay, yeah. Oprah's Oprah's slow it down. And then Very another cool. person, which there goes my elf hat, um, <laughs> is right behind you. Erin Mahoney. And um, she was actually at our shopping for the cause event. Yeah. She's girl power. And uh -huh. she'll be coming on. And she, her enrichment programs for young women are in about 13 public schools, including right. Hopkins. Mm -hmm. But... Um, she will have released her first book, and we'll be talking about that. Oh, and uh, book release. We are actually yeah. going to have a guest on for a second time, uh, the one we talked about earlier. Um, yesterday, um, Patricia and I had lunch with Linda Waters. Mm -hmm. And she's going to come back? She's going to come. Confidence she Beads. founded Confidence Beads and um, another business called Back to Business. And she's actually written a book. And once Very the book cool. is launched and stuff like that, we're going to have her back on to talk about Very that. Very cool. And kind of just, you know, motivating people to get mm -hmm. out of their um, complacency place. Yep. Well, it shows you the number of women that we're getting a chance to meet through the page and just broadly diverse, so many interesting interests and backgrounds, newcomers coming to town, the woman who moved here from New Jersey, writes for the Huffington Post, so excited to be in Hopkinton. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you talked about Sarah Gillespie, the sugar art. 
every day there's a new face. Well, and, and even though we have some great, what I think, you know, very accomplished people. We have some other fun stuff. It looks like we're going to launch, and and I don't oh. want to overcommit myself. Um, this is the uh, book club that is going to be quasi virtual, but every now and then social. And so it's going to allow people to drop in and out, ah, read books, like kind of book gather club. and be social, but mm -hmm. but you know, not the, the strictness of yeah, not the strict <laughs> pressure. You got to read by. <laughs> Um, so if you're available and busy, you get to read your book and then sh share socially, even social media. Um, I love the drop-in aspect and certainly knowing what the book is. Because, yeah. you know, I have to force myself to read more fiction. I tend to read things that are, I love reading about you know, real people and, and their lives or, you know. You say uh, that. I'm that way too. Yeah, I, I love fiction. a lot of historical fiction and right. I love nonfiction and I've read biographies and autobiographies or how things have been discovered and right. and, and I do like I know <laughs> leave it on there I love it I know but I, I do I read like crap. a good mystery I no, do like don't. a good mystery book I read a lot of Nora Roberts J.D. Robb good for you and um, stuff uh, Debbie Maycomber, things like that, but a lot more lighthearted, a lot of beach reads. J.D. Yeah. Robb and... I'm weird. I need to get a list from you. I mean, I would J. like J.D. Robb and Nora Roberts are actually the same person. Yeah. Oh. So Nora Roberts writes, you know, kind of romance novels. J.D. Robb is a detective series. Right. Okay. And, but, uh, and she's from Maryland and, you know... See, I do weird stuff. Like, I've read of all of Dickens' works. Yeah. And I've read of almost all of Faulkner's works. And yeah, so like I'm kind of weird writer. like that. I read know? those really? in the summer, in summer. All of them, though. I've read them <laughs> all. Me too. And I, but you know, like in the summer, Judy Bloom came out with two ad yeah. an adult book. I read that, and she had one a few years ago, an adult book. And I'm reading Malcolm Gladwell. And just you know, like, I like again. Him. I mean, I just love loving him. everything because I was Malcolm. Yeah, I know. I want, I want that. You know, the, the, I want books that are lighthearted. Yeah, but that's um, fair. But no, it's all good. It's all good. Well. We're about to toast the new yeah, year, yeah, celebrate yeah, some yeah, holiday. The end of the so year. we're gonna celebrate Christmas and toast in the new year yeah, all in one I'm evening. <laughs> you know, and also big shout out, thank you to H Camp for putting oh, up with absolutely. us doing this, and um, throughout, you know, absolutely. Mike and Tom and Matt and Courtney and Kelsey was here, but um, especially Courtney, she she kind of manages our schedule coming in Courtney's and out of this our place. producer, absolutely. Yeah, so, but um, thank you guys, happy new year, happy, happy new holidays years. to you all. Thank you so much for joining us. See you soon. Hi, I'm Jen Belisi from Golden Pond Assisted Living in Hoppington. Staying active is essential to happy and healthy aging. Golden Pond has activities for seniors and people of every age. There is a diverse range of opportunities to be had. We've made some friendships, not acquaintances. If you'd like to participate in any of Golden Pond's upcoming events, visit the events page on Golden Pond's website or call 508-435-1250 for more information. We hope to see you soon. Yeah. 26 and you're